another broadcast of The Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. All past broadcasts are podcasts. Find them at artistfirst.com. We welcome your questions and comments. Please use DJ at artistfirst.com. And now, here they are, Michael and Kaylin Lyons. And uh, I am Michael Lyons. And I'm Kaylin Lyons. And Kaylin, and, and uh, tonight for, for longtime listeners of the show, uh, you'll note that uh, Kaylin is filling in for uh, Margaret, who is under the weather tonight. So that makes this show special. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit of a sub in. A little bit of sub in, uh, because tonight's topic uh, will be uh, uh, revolving around the word special. And it will not involve, as was previously mentioned earlier um, before the program, any short buses. Mm, mm. <laughs> so, yeah. That we know of. As, that we know of. That we know of. That we know of. You know, uh, but tonight is, a substitute. It's, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, well, not special. We just sub in one person for another, huh? Um, no, well, this is this does make it special because this is the um, this is the last show of a very special year, uh, and we are we have a, a a very special guest, and I am I've been accused of being a little special at times. <laughs> I think like all unique, engineers, perhaps un, unique. I like all engineers, uh, um, which I believe is is a truism. We we all fall somewhere on the autism spectrum. We're somewhere on the spectrum there. Which makes us special. Well, you know, the nature of a spectrum, it's a, a range anywhere from being fully something to not something and of the entire rainbow in between. Yes. I feel like a rainbow. I feel a song coming on. Uh, well, anyway, so tonight, uh, uh, so our, as I mentioned, our guest is going to be uh, Kaylin. He's going to be subbing in for uh, Margaret. And uh, our topic tonight is, um, succinctly put, is you are not special. And um, the the kind of the subcontext, the subcontext of all that is, is that uh, in the world today, in our world today, a lot of what would be considered the um, uh, sort of the the noise in our in our society, I think, revolves around the fact that people do think that they're special. And that comes in in many ways, but one of the ones that you see all the time is when people want other folks to defer to them, you know, to go out of their way to make something right, uh, to find somebody to blame for your problems, for argument's sake. And um, all of that is, is sort of revolves around that idea that, that I, me, the, 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 the person that, that I am, is more important, more special, needs to be taken care of. Uh, more than the other, and and I think a lot of the trouble that we see in the world comes from that. Hmm. I would like to pull, uh, call attention to a very specific phrase, one that I love, honestly, because it's almost the hubris of man distilled into one sentence. I'm w- I'm waiting. This sounds good. Have you ever heard someone say, "I'm built different"? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just built different. I'm built different. So <laughs> I it it won't happen to me. I'm just better. And so it is inherently that that extremely human desire of wanting to believe oneself to be unique or special in such a way. Well, and that and, go ahead, yeah. That's for some ephemeral reason or another, just simply our perspective being from ourselves, so sort of the seat of our consciousness, somehow makes uh, makes so that we will just be better at something. Right. Isn't that just a corollary, uh, Kay, that I've heard also, is that if you ask people to rate themselves, if you put, them in, you put some task in front of them and say, well, you know, um, what would, how would you rate yourself for this particular task? And it can be, you know, anything, but... Let's say it's something that they, they, you'll say, well, you know, this is something that you, you say you know how to do. Well, how will you rate yourself in that task? And almost invariably, people will rate themselves far higher 
uh, if given a given the chance, than they actually are. Hmm. And it's sort of a you, you have a you have, and I think you just said it is you have a a bias uh, towards seeing yourself as sort of. Uh, better at something, and it's not necessarily something like a skill. People won't say, "Well, I know how to operate a, a you know, a, a machine press better than the next guy." But if you if you will say to them, um, you know, what's your level of self awareness compared to the average person? Exactly. Or or you know, in a survival situation, do you think you would do better or worse? You know, better than average, average or worse than average in, in a survival situation where you had to, you know, live by your wits. And and almost always people will say, oh no, I think you know, I I would be the one who would make it. Uh, another way of of that you see this come up is is um, people say, well. You know, how could pick your pick your totalitarian totalitarian regime? You know, the, the Nazis come in for this all the time. But we'll just stick with them because they're easy. But you know, say if if the Nazis were taking power, you know, would you be the person who would protest, or are you, you the person who would go along and knuckle under? Are you the person who would, you know, stand up for for the rights of the downtrodden and hide people in your attic and all that stuff? And I think almost yeah. oh, everybody would like to believe that they would be the one who would stand up. Of course. Because they're special. Really, I mean, <laughs> the truth, the simple truth of the matter is that for any of these, you don't know how you react, react in any of those situations until it has happened to you. I True. would be curious um, if there has been a study done on, like, people who have been through situations uh, like that, would they have different answers to those questions? Yeah, well, you mean those who, someone who had been through a trial? Yes. Although I guess it can't really uh, talk to them in theor- hypotheticals and theoreticals anymore. It's like, hey, do you know how you would do in a disaster scenario? Yes. <laughs> yes, I, yes, I do. <laughs> I was in it. Uh, but I, I think that there's, you know, that uh, your first point, the one, or rather what you just mentioned is exactly correct, is that um, it, it's both a hypothetical and because you you want to imagine yourself in sort of a heroic way, or at least in a non-average way, you want to you want to rate yourself higher in the hypothetical. Say, so, well, you know, um, other people would have been taken taken in by this, but I would have seen through it. I would have been the person um, who wouldn't be uh, who wouldn't be knuckling under to this to this sort of um, you know zeitgeist, or, or it's really more like. Uh, you know, going the along with things. the flow. Yes, exactly. Going along with the flow of things. I'll I'll be the one who who will uh, think for myself and and not, um, you know, not just do what everyone else is doing. And I think yeah. that that's that's it, as you said, inherent. It's your bias towards yourself. Yeah, and also like in that specific example, we cannot ignore the considerable uh, advantage of hindsight mm-hmm. here. Yeah, <laughs> hindsight is twenty twenty. But I would also argue that um, this human feeling of that you as a person are not the average person, right? It's almost if someone were to come up to you and you ask them all these questions and they said, "Oh no, I would, I would be knuckled down by fascism. I wouldn't act well in a." <laughs> right. uh, in a hype in like a plane crash, I'd be the first one to die. It's like <laughs> sure, terrible. you're you are a hugely pragmatic person, but yeah, your gut reaction is, wow, you have a really poor self esteem. <laughs> right, exactly. And is that is that fair? Like is it right is it like important to self esteem to believe yourself better than the average person? Because that person could argue that they are a pragmatic individual who just understands like the truth of themselves but is that bad is that like bad self-esteem wise i don't it's it's odd What's your yeah take? well there's a couple of things there i like i like that statement in a couple of ways i like what you just said and i also like the fact that you know almost every kid is told from very early age. They're said, "Well, you, know, you can be anything you want to be, you know, uh, or or you are you're special. You you have these unique and special talents." And in in truth, in truth, and this is part of our premise we haven't gotten to yet, but we, well, I'll just mention it here. In truth, that's there's there's a great deal of truth to the uniqueness of you. But uh, 
your pragmatic point is more along the lines of, of what could be really unique about you is that you really know yourself well. And you know that you're a, one, a person who goes along to get along. Or you know that you're a, per, you're a people pleaser, right? So you, you know that you would, have, you would find a way to make both the Nazis and the, revolution, uh, you know, and the rebels uh, feel good about you because you, know, you want everyone to feel good about you. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. so, but it sounds terrible. <laughs> you know? So knowing yourself well, uh, well enough to know your, your faults, right? Know your, know your weaknesses, know what you're good at, know what you're bad at. Is I, I think people kind of think they're good at things, and they don't want to admit that they're that they're bad at things. Well, the, it's almost like a gut. I, I would say that a gut reaction is to say that you're like above average at something, right? Hmm. It's not even really a thought about thing, because if you're really going through an assessment of what you are and aren't good at, I don't think you're going to. Um, You'd have you'd have more details and stuff, but if you're just asking someone off the street, that's something that just haven't thought about. You'd say you're above average at it. Yeah, and, and um, but but I would say in general you're wrong. <laughs> oh. well, you know the, the 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 point is is that average. Oh yes. By its very nature, kind of encompasses the largest segment of of the populace. And and there's certain things that people will Im- instantly admit. Because, you know, I would I'm going to be really sucky at the parallel bars, for argument's sake, or synchronized swimming, or something that that they know is like s- so crazy hard to do that only five people in the world do it well. Uh, but but if you give somebody an average task, you know, um, how good are you at uh, you know I don't know driving? You know, like, like are you a really good driver? And I think almost everyone will rate themselves as sort of above average. That every all the other guys are really bad at driving, right? You, you see this when you're when people are driving. It's like, oh, this guy sucks. This guy's all over the road. This guy's going too fast. This one's going too slow. You know, uh, I would never do that. But but uh, if you take you know in general, I would say that almost everybody does all those things that they complain about that other people do on the road. You know. Oh yes, but you see, when I did it, it was an honest mistake. Right. No, and I had a good reason. Exactly. <laughs> I, had good, I had a good reason to do that. But the and, other and guy never has a good reason. Of course, yeah. It's it's the ability to have the access to your whole internal thought process and decision making. Well, over there, that's just some faceless car that has slighted me. Well, more than that, they're doing it to get me. You know, they're doing it to get in my oh. way. They're going slow on purpose. You know, they're 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 literally morons who don't know how to drive and probably got their license ten minutes ago. And um, versus me, who's the most most conscientious and and important person on the road, I'm special. They should get out of my way because I've got things to do, and you know, I've, I've, I'm late already, and <laughs> it goes on yeah, and on. I have my yeah, I have my reasons, and I think you're absolutely right. I want I don't want to go too quickly past it, that you give yourself a lot of slack because you have this whole internal dialogue and all your, all your reasons are all lined up and, and you kind of give none of that benefit to the other person. The other person is, is this faceless automaton who is just there to annoy you. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Which is the, the the, most of the time it's true. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I, not, the, not. I'd say it's, obviously going to be hard to put into practice in the moment to moment, but the acknowledgement of the individual in uh, any circumstance, the acknowledgement of some whole other person doing all of their own things on the other end will make you happier when dealing with something that is easy to perceive as just sort of annoying. Like another example involving the great masses of the faceless, uh, you'll find this sort of situation on the internet <laughs> all of the time these yeah. these weird little text boxes inside of my magic box are making me angry <laughs> for some reason wait a minute wait. <laughs> weird little text boxes inside of my magic box oh yeah there's this i have those too yeah it's, it's weird. <laughs> very easy to it's extremely easy to forget that there's people behind those yes um and I think it's not not just extremely easy. I think it's almost uh, it's almost it's almost the fault of the media itself. You know, the, the fact that it's so removed from an actual person. 
It's easy. And, it's really uh, easy to do on, yeah. on the internet. Small, a small tangent. I think it's related, though. Mm. Um, there's one specific, like, thought pattern that you can see in, like, comment sections or other uh, just other places where people are, are able to comment on things where someone will be telling a story or talking about this thing that has happened to them. It's a little unbelievable or a little <laughs> uncommon. Right. Or it's something that is not something that has, ha- has happened to everybody. And then somebody has to come along in the comments and say, oh, yeah, definitely. That totally happened. Like, right. they're actually in the discussion. It's, it's strange because there's no room there for just the idea that something, could, if it hasn't happened to me, it could not have happened. Right. There's no, there's no space there for, like, how wide human experience is. And so they just instead spend it on, like, short-sightedly showing off that I'm so smart because I've pointed out that this thing definitely didn't happen. Yeah, well, you know, the, uh, before we... That's really, really interesting because two things there, right? You, you just said them. I want to just re-say them because I heard them. Heard you say it. Is that the person who's making this... Uh, first of all, the, the story... Let's say the story is told. And the person who's making this is is instantly assuming the ability to judge it, right? There's, they're, they're right away saying that if, if, if I don't think it's true, that, that, that rather than, than do any other form of, of, um, of verification, or, or even, as you said, just say, well, you know, it happened to them. Maybe, you know, it could have happened. Uh, no, no, no. Engagement it, with it, even if it is a story. Right. But no, they instantly go to, in essence, um, denigrating and mocking it and saying, well, that didn't happen. This, this is obviously, you know, um, just completely made up. And if it couldn't or if it didn't happen to me or if it's not within my experience, that this person has to be either lying or, or just, you know, making up a story and trying to, trying to fool people. And, I'm gonna, and it's up to me to both judge that and call them out on it. Yes, I will be the bearer of truth, and I will type the words, and then everybody clapped, and Einstein was there. It's right. like, ah, yes. <laughs> right. ah, yes. Yes, exactly, that, that some, somehow they're special, they're, the, the, and this is where we're kind of back to our theme, is that they're so special that they get to arbitrate what, you know, they get to be the arbiter of truth. This is an extremely egoic position, you know, and uh, and we touched on it just briefly, or maybe we didn't, but uh, just to, what you just said reminded me of the fact that, in essence, this is all about um, me, the person who 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 has things happen to them, whose, whose total experience is important to not only me, but to everybody else, being and also in the position of being able to judge and and say to anyone else's experience, well, that didn't happen. That never happens to anybody. You you're making that up. This is obviously a uh, just some sort of fantasy. It's completely without relevance. And uh, I should let me tell everyone about how wonderful I am, <laughs> you know, and how how yeah, it, silly and made up you are. Yeah, it's an inherently self centered action, though. Like. Can, it is taken in almost uh it could almost be taken that they're like think that they're helping, which is also uh, interesting yes yes and it's a, it's a very narcissistic position as well you know in the true classic narcissism, you are the most important person in the world, and everyone else thinks so too <laughs> you know not it's not just I am important to me, but everyone. Every, I'm important to everyone else in the world too, and so therefore I'm the most special. And this is clinical, you know. When you get to be, the, I'm the most special person in the world, uh, and everyone else should defer to me. Uh, that's that's almost the clinical narcissist. Well, I think it, it, it's more. I think it's also not necessarily that level of negative, but it's like they don't take the moment to consider that everyone else who is reading this might just be reading it and you know taking it with a grain of salt. With, hmm. you know, some level of skepticism, it's almost like they ignore the possibility that other people could be disbelieving it as well. Right. Or just weighing it back and forth in their heads. 
Right. Well, so they they put themselves in the position of 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 I'm. Let me let me let me inform all you rubes, all the rest of you who are, who can't see through this. That here's the you know here's the the actual truth, and uh, it's be, beholden upon me. You know, incumbent upon me to not only um, call this out, but but make sure the rest of you understand how much smarter I am than the rest of you as well. You know? It's it's a wonderful conceit. <laughs> You know, not only am I smarter than everybody else, but I'm also telling everyone who's who's obviously, you know, buying this line of BS hook, line and sinker, how how silly it all is. And you've just been waiting for my opinion about it, of course. And now, of course, see, I'm the one who's pointing out that this happens, which makes me the smart one. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it, it makes you, you know, and it's such a terrible conceit. Uh, again, you're putting yourself in, into a into a special special category because not only are you seeing through it and in the position to judge it, but all the rest of them, as you said, and then Einstein was there and everybody clapped because all the rest of the audience was was waiting with bated breath for me for my opinion about this. You know, I'm 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 the what do they call them influencer or something that the I'm, rest I'm, of the world was waiting for. Yes, we get to be. I guess we could call it double special or meta special because now we. For the knowledge of this being, yeah, meta special. Oh, that's wait yeah. a minute, that's a term. I like that. Well, we're going layers backwards, right? That's I mean, special. okay, you can't <laughs> you can't get too recursive with it, right? Like you have there has to be a hard cut off somewhere because we keep on because I could literally fill up the rest of the time with saying ah, but if you see uh, <laughs> now that I'm pointing out that I'm pointing out that I'm pointing out that we're pointing out things. Yeah. Now I'm extra super smart. We got to cut well, it off somewhere. I'm not so sure. I think meta meta special would be uh, would be okay. <laughs> mm. We need there needs to be a, a term we can add to this where it's like to the limit of special, right? To the, to, to the mega meta. Just, just assume that we did this for the, the rest of uh, eternity, and we can, can continue the conversation from there. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, is that a re- is that not a reasonable thing to ask our ask uh, the audience to do? It's totally reasonable. Um, but if we if we back up a little bit, one of the um, you know one of the tenets of the soul of the Man, I know you've been on with us a few times, but one of the tenets is is that you know this sort of behavior, this this sort of um, I'm special, and everybody else is is less special. This is this is classic. Uh, ego-based or egoic behavior, and and I don't know if you've spent any time, uh, you know, listening to Tolle, but um, Eckhart Tolle is a, is sort of a. This is one of his his central themes: is that 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 ego is what gets in the way of you actually experiencing your your actual life, which is which is special, but no, not more special. The ego wants everything to be more special. It wants it wants to be. Um, you know, as you just said, the the meta special uh, thing, the, the thing which is specialer than special, even. Uh, yeah, and I think, if you don't mind me cutting in, no, no, go, please do. I, I think here, I think special is the wrong term when mm. you're talking about individuals and people. I think that the there needs to be a cutoff and distinction between special and unique. Hmm. Every single human is unique in their experience and in their self, in their mind. But as a mass, as a collective of people, there are things that you can sort of point to as trends within humanity. And then you point to the outliers in humans from those and say, these people are special. All of us are unique. Which is yeah, a weird thing uh, to say. No, no, I, I like that. And, and it, it is a good term. It is a good way to sort of back up from the term. Um, so so let's, let's, let's tease that apart a little bit. I like, I like where you're going with this. So uniqueness, uh, and, and, and you can go all the way down to the cellu- cellular level. I can't say that. That's special about me. I can't say cellu- cellu- cellular. I, it makes me stutter. Anyway, so down cellular. to that level... <laughs> The cellular level, you know, it has too many L's in it. Uh, at that level, you you certainly are unique. Your your DNA 
unless you are a clone or a twin or, or you know that sort of thing is is unique amongst all other individuals on the on the planet at this given moment and arguably from the beginning of, of humanity going all the way back to the, the very first proto hominid your, your DNA is is unique but then we also um, we believe I believe anyway that that each one of us is a is a unique emanation from source it, you know that uh, incarnation of Source into flesh, if you will, is a unique combination of things. So you're biologically unique, you're you're uh, intellectually unique, and you're spiritually unique. So you're 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 extremely, again, this bad term. You're extremely special. You're you're all one of a kind, you know. So that's true of all of us. The the term that we kind of wrestle with is is, and it's this is. Uh, uh, an unfortunate consequence of English is we have too many things that we mean that we like to talk about with the exact same word. So, so special it could mean, as you just said, somebody who can can do you know a, a, a twenty seven foot pole vault is is a very special person. You know that took a lot of years of training. It took a lot of years of dedication. Took natural uh, ability and all these other things. But yet, we say very, very properly that that person's uh, right to exist is not any better than anyone else's right to exist. We wouldn't say, uh, or we could say, and it would be wrong, that only people that can do a 27-foot foot, uh, vault uh, have the right to live. And everyone else is their slave and, and is at their command because they've achieved a pinnacle where they're more human or better human than any other any other person, so they're they're superhuman. They're they're now the actual people that everybody wants to be, and everyone else is somehow lesser than them. Yes, it's only natural they're in the upper class because they can do the twenty seven uh, foot pole vaults and reach the upper class. Right, and 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 where you where you run into various forms of tyrannies and other forms of of terrible abuses of this type of system are where you identify the other as being less than human. Uh, You see it in many um, terrible political movements where, in essence, the the other is identified as a class of people or a race of people or um, a a nationality of people or or whatever it is. But the ego says, we are obviously superior or I, you know, it can be unitary, but let's say we, this group, our group, the group of, of things that we have self-identified as being superior, puts everyone else in the position of being inferior, and then, then oh. we are special, and they are not special. <laughs> you know? Yes, they are, they are less than us, they are rats or insects or vermin. The justifications for them to be inhuman, and you by your nature of your being is for one reason or another well special the, that seductive term it's that 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 desire to be better or greater or whatever whatever is unearned just given and all you have to do is be this or that right and su- the and, superiority i mean you see it in royal family for argument's sake Oh yes, divinely given. Right. You know, the, the 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 throughout human history, and this is the egoic position, but it's 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 it, it manifests itself in in myriads of ways. So the egoic position is, um, I, the the egoic I, needs an other, and the other is the the person is the being who is wrong, who is less than, who is. N- not me, and by definition, um, you know, by definition, my superiority, my 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 right to exist, is in direct and and proper contrast to their right to to exist. My desires, needs, wants, and everything else about me should be gratified or deferred to by the other because I am obviously right <laughs> you know, in, in, some, in some undefinable sense and they are obviously wrong and to the extent that I can gather a group or, or enough power to enforce that 
you you see the root of almost every um, injustice and tyranny. Oh yes, you know humans have a remarkably hard time killing other humans. So you know what the solution is: make so they don't hmm. see them as humans anymore. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, and, and it's why, just, as simple and as horrible as point, that. If at any point your group that you consider yourself a part of starts calling what you know to be humans anything but get out of there self-examine hmm. don't it's, allow it's... anyone to tell you who is and isn't human but 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 right there is where people will say well i would do that and we, this is kind of wrapping back to the beginning of our conversation they would say i would do that if, if ever i saw that my group was identifying another group as being subhuman as being less mm-hmm. than I would right away stand up for the rights of the oppressed, say these people are human, they're just as, they're, they're no more special than you or I. Um, they are to be um, respected and defended, and, and you're wrong. And why people don't do that is because you immediately become part of that subgroup, and the, the group, the, the group that you formerly were part of, turn upon you and make you the pariah. It becomes, I don't know if you know who um, Bonhoeffer is. Uh, but uh, he was a very famous uh, for standing up to the Nazis. He was a Catholic priest, and he um, he stood up uh, for the rights of the of the people who, who he saw properly as being just as human as anyone else. So there wasn't a master race and a subhuman race. There was just human race, and he was imprisoned and, and ultimately killed. And and this is this is where when these regimes grow to that power to that uh, degree where they are willing to identify the subhumans and and turn them into something which can be easily disposed of or or certainly remove you know the rights of them are, are completely uh, fungible whereas our our rights by you know by our very nature are are uh, are immutable and and uh, um, uh, you know so you know always superior to them you get turned upon, you know, that, that's where, that's where the screw turns. That's where the, that's where the actual hard part of doing that is, is that your group. It's an active thing. You have yes. to do it. You can't just stand by mm. because it's very easy to do nothing. But uh, yes. uh, what, can, what was his name again? Sorry. Bonhoeffer. The, of the priest. Bonhoeffer. Yeah, Charles, so I you think see, it's Charles you, Bonhoeffer, I believe. Charles Bonhoeffer. So you see how we know his name and we're talking yeah. about him? Yeah. He obviously was special, but also, more importantly, how many other people were alive in that country when this happened? Millions. Millions. Yeah, millions. That so was during, millions during Nazi Germany. Germany. Exactly. So my point here is that why are we still remembering Bonhoeffer's name over any of them? Yeah. Because he's the one who did something, and we're talking about him because many, many others did not. Exactly If we so. look at those objectively existing numbers and bring them to modern humanity... Most people would not have been able to. You right. can claim and that humanity has changed, but human nature does not change, at least not quickly. No, far from it. In fact, um, everything we're talking about now exists today, existed a hundred years ago, existed a thousand years ago, and I would say it would go back into prehistory. Um, the the whole and tribalism. I mean, this is all really tribalism when it comes right down to oh, it. Yeah, there's there's our group who are, there's, there's right there, there's our group who are by who are inherently um, you know our motives are pure. Our gods are the best. Um, our um, our rights and privileges and our land and our things are to be respected. And then there's the outer darkness, the others. I mean, you probably know this, but classically, um, China used to be a closed society, completely closed society. 
and they refer to the rest of the world. The, the, the symbol for China, which is this kind of of this kind of circle with a with a rod down the middle of it, it literally means the world. And the the name for the Chinese people for themselves, and this is true of many other societies, is the people. We are the people. This is the world. And they meant China, and they meant the Chinese people. But but everyone else mm. was considered ghosts. They were, it was when you left the boundaries of China, you you exited the world and you went into into an essence a ghostly world full of non humans, these these evil ones, these spirits who you had to be very careful about because they would you know they could attack you, you might have to defend yourself against them. But but as long as you were within the land with the people, you, you, everything was mm. was okay. Now within China there were many factions, of course, but the point is is that that. Tribalism. Within the language itself, the root, as, yeah, as well, you said, seen in seen in many groups. Seen in many groups, and and so so the the insular nature of of humanity is that we want to be special. We we want ourselves to be special. We want our family to be special. We want our group to be superior and special, and we want to point to the other. And this is all egoic, and say, well, they're wrong. They're de- by definition bad. Their, their gods are inferior, their lands are to be subjugated, their people are to be enslaved, you know? <laughs> Doesn't this sound like a horrible familiarity to it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, yeah, look, if you could somehow, magically or however, convince every human that we were all part of the same tribe, if the human mind was able to conceive of that and keep it yeah. there, yeah. The, the the world would become paradise because it would be your family that you need to help. Well, and you and, know, you know, you're not or your wrong. Your group, at least, you're not wrong. And and to the extent, um, you know, one thing we can look at at the world today, and you mentioned human nature, and it doesn't change very very quickly. But over the last few centuries, as the world has become smaller, okay, and by that, we, what we really mean is that your group. Um, now can intermingle with other groups on a on a on a instant by instant basis by you know this horrible mm-hmm. thing we call the internet is also a tremendous um, mixer of cultures and of languages and of you know viewpoints and so sure you still see tribalism um, on the internet you see it every day but yet you you also see the chipping away the weakening of that because you may find that. Um, you know, the, the ancient phrase, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. But it really comes down to is, I don't know who my enemy is anymore. Or maybe it's nobody. You know, there's there's a lot of doubt that creeps in because it's so, um, there's so much, there's so many more points of contact. One of the, the big things, and I'll just put this out there and you can opine, but I think one of the big things that tyrannies love is to control information. You know, you've mm-hmm. got to get the narrative right and you've got to maintain it. It's got to have a, a, a doxology, an orthodoxy. It's got to, you've got to believe these seven things, and you've got to wear your underwear on the outside, or you're not one of the people. And and you and if you, if you find a radical, those are people that that know other things, and they're inherently bad. Well, the problem with the internet, or the good thing about it, is that the radicals are everywhere. <laughs> you know, we're yeah, all well, radicals. With, <laughs> yeah, with the, yeah. So with um, internet. Well, what what is it? Travel. Um, there's probably a saying for it, but travel destroys prejudice. Yeah, it, I think there is a saying for it. But yes, it's something. That's the sentiment, anyway. So, the internet can be almost its own little form of travel, where you come into contact with so many different groups. But there's two things to look out for. I mean, there's obviously more things, but with the internet. For one, it can easily uh, end up happening that people find uh, incestuous little idea tide pools and hmm. echo chambers and can be used to reinforce these um, ideas of like a smaller group and can be used to, instead of gaining many different perspectives, simply wallow in the same perspective for a very hmm. long period of time until it becomes basically reality. Right, and you can have these kind and, of shaming, shaming contests where everyone gangs up on a particular viewpoint, and and with the internet, it makes it, to form a mob is very easy. Hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, and I had a second point. I lost it immediately. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Apologies. No, 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 the the tide pools, the the um the the uh, 
the internet was, you know, allows you to, it doesn't always chip away at these things. It also makes them insular. It makes you, you know, gives you the ability to, to find echo chambers almost more easily. Oh yeah. Like not everyone on earth is on the internet. That's another thing. Really? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait a minute. It, it can easily be its own sort of, uh, citation culture. required. <laughs> uh, you're right. Oh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> but yeah, the the uh, for completely free and open interaction between as many different people as possible will break down the barriers between cultures and result in a more unified world. Yeah, I mean, you were talking uh, about being a little travel, a little way of traveling. In essence, it 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 gets you. It can it can be a a doorway. Or uh, you know, it's really more of a of a of a, a path. It's a two way thing, where you can be exposed to something you could never easily be exposed to, and and it can you know it can change you, and you can also you know expose yourself to the to the world much more, you know, some people figuratively, but <clears throat> or literally rather, but but you can mm. you can put your ideas out there and have you know you can have somebody who 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 craps all over them, but you can also have somebody who adds to them, who, who literally says, well, that's interesting, but I never thought, did you ever think of it this way? And you have a real discussion uh, with someone who, who's in a faraway land, for, for argument's sake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, and this is another important thing. On the internet, very important to consider that uh, the the people talking on the other end uh don't give them like you, you don't know what their perspectives are that you don't have any idea if they know what they're talking about or not so try not to let their voices be too loud in your head uh because you don't know if who on the other side of the screen is like a literal uh 12 year old like a 12 year old <laughs> not to say that a 12 year old couldn't have a good perspective but there's a different amount of weight you'd put to someone's perspective when they've, you know, when they have relevant life experiences to what they're right. talking about and when they're literally just making things up according to how they, how confident they feel. Right, and, so, and I think you, you're, maybe your generation and maybe the generation just after yours now uh, who's grown up with the internet and, and really will become every generation from, from now on most likely will grow up with this level of, of interaction uh, has learned these things. I, I think people have initially, it was much more, you know, well, somebody on the internet said this to me and it made me upset. I think now people have learned to, to, um, navigate it and, and to, as you just said, you know, just because you put something on the internet and a thousand people say it's horrible, um, you don't hear about the 10,000 that thought it was great or, or didn't care. And you can't. Oh yeah, like yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, people don't comment unless they have a very strong feeling one way or the other. They right. filter down opinions to the people who really care to actually do something. Right, right, and and in fact, you, very often people will um, count. And this is true. Also, also, this is we've kind of gone a little bit far, far afield, but this is true in human experience always. Is that humans will this will will give much more credence to the negative. Than the positive, you know, if you say there's a horrible tornado coming, uh, and it's predicted for next week, and everything, and we should probably all go and, and start building shelters, and people, are like, oh yeah, 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 but if you say no, it, you know, it's going to be. I've heard it's going to be just wonderful weather. You say, oh, that's probably not true. It's probably going to be a tornado. You know, you, what do you know? Uh, the 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 you know the harbinger of bad news kind of automatically gets credence, almost because you know if you ignore bad news bad things could happen. <laughs> but if you ignore yeah, good news, it's like, you know, good news ignored is still good. You know, it just, it's, 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 you know, it's like, it's, it doesn't matter as much. Um, so the, the <clears throat> people make a cottage industry, I think on the in internet and even before it of being, you know, the harbingers of doom, you know, they, they're always, what do they call them? I literally call them like doomsayers or, or doomers, I think is the, is the term I've heard. Where in essence everything is bad all the time, always, and that and their job is to tell everybody about it, how bad it's going to be, you know. And I aren't you glad I'm here to warn you about it? <laughs> I'm special. <laughs> mm. uh, honestly, though, if, if you ask me, there probably should be um, a class in school about like uh, 
internet literacy, if that mm. makes sense. Like being being responsible uh, with information on the internet. Yeah. Uh, considering how uh, how like embedded into uh, like people the internet is, or like life the internet is nowadays. It is. Yeah. Uh, like looking for common um i don't know like like could you have a class on common sense does that make sense because you know well it, it does make sense um and and but i i think the sentiment that you're, that you're putting there is exactly correct I, I you know what i think that course if it's not being taught now it, it really ought to be because let's say like like we just mentioned <clears throat> The current, the current, let's say, generation that's that's in high school or or in or or in grammar school today, they never knew a world without the internet. If you, you know, they were born and it was the, the internet was there. Um, you're you're a little bit older, and so I think, in as a child, it was there. You know, it was there. But if you go back a little bit further, let's say if you're talking to people who are, let's say, thirty in their mid thirties now. Uh, their early childhood, it wasn't really a presence, and then it became something of their young adulthood. So you have maybe two and a half generations now who, for whom the Internet has been not just a, a, you know, a, um, a toy, but it's really a, 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 a omnipresent thing. It is it, it's in every factor of society. And now nobody is, well, you said no, not everybody's on the Internet, but almost nowhere in the world... <laughs> Are you not on the internet in some way, shape, or form? Even if, even oh, yeah. if in America, if sure. well, I think in the developed world in general, if you if you aren't in, um, you know, what used to be called the third world, I'm not sure what it's called anymore. But if you're in any, even in even in what we would call the third world, um, and by that you would say way out in the countryside of 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 uh, of so the poorer sections of India, for argument's sake, they have internet. They they've wirelessly um, brought the internet out to those areas through whatever means um you know all throughout sub-saharan africa they have internet it's all over cell phones have really really kind of entrenched the internet maybe in the, the wilds of papua new guinea to, to pick one out of a hat you don't have internet but i'll bet you you do if you had a satellite phone or something so it's 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 wormed its way into nearly every human's hands on the planet you wouldn't find very few um, far, far minority who had never heard of it. So let's say that most people have at least know what the internet is. So, so the, the, the where I'm going with all this is now that it's wormed its way in, that course is probably going to get start getting um, more and more into almost like home ec, you know, internet savviness, you know, 101. Uh, this is, these are the 10 things you don't do on the internet, kids. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it certainly what will help is having, uh, as those inter- the, those generations that grew up with it as like a factor of life become teachers. Right, right. Also, for, also we definitely Parents. want home back to be a thing that exists as well. There's just well, an even further attach in the field. Well, yes, exactly. But, <laughs> but, 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 and, and. But to kind of go back to our premise, because we've been we've been going on a little bit of a couple three tangents. But the 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 ubiquity of the internet has given us the ability to realize that we aren't that we aren't different from other people. That the insularity of the tribe could easily be broken. That in, in societies where they wanted to, where they want people to not hear about the internet. Like North Korea, for argument's sake, um, they literally have to shut down. There's the Great Firewall of China. There's there's also you know the 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 access to the internet in North Korea is incredibly controlled. You know only people who are uh, of the party orthodoxy have the are special enough to to be exposed to ideas which are not you know approved by the party they have to they only have the only reason they're that they can see these things is so they can know what not to let through you know they're the censors they're the guards of information but if you if you take people broadly and you give them access to interact with others uh you can see this in microcosm if you if you take a, a random group of people this is this i'm sure you've seen this happen and you, you put them all in a room, and nobody talks to anybody. Everyone's looking at them, and they'll talk to their friends or whatever. 
And then you serve them a meal. You put, you put food in front of them and tables, and everyone has to just sit down and eat together. All of a sudden, everyone's talking to everyone else. Generally speaking, this happens because you, you, when you share food with somebody in a, uh, in a sort of open situation where there isn't really a competition, you immediately make them part of your tribe. You, know? <laughs> you say, oh, you know, we're all eating together. We must, we must be part of the same, same tribe. You see it at, at, at weddings where, where you know, everyone, by the end of the night, everyone's had a couple of, of drinks. Someone's drunk, but they all have a couple of drinks. They've eaten together, and everyone's like, yay, I love you. You're my best friend. And you say, who are those people the next day? And they don't remember their name. But for the, that period of time, they had become your you you become a a loosely knit society you you don't even trade last names everyone has a first name so you know who you're talking to and sometimes it's just the kid with the red hair or whatever and you you might play a game or you might everyone's digging holes on the beach but humans do that too they immediately make a tribe if there isn't a mm. tribe <laughs> you know we we instantly want to have a group and and that group becomes a little special to us, and in, in that again, different sense of the word, is that you start to say, well, you know that I, you know, I now kind of know a couple things about this guy, and he seems like an all right fellow, or this lady it seems like an all right person, and and they know a couple things about me, and we've we've shared a, an anecdote or two, maybe over loud music or a drink, and you 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 say, well, I I kind of they're they're okay, you know, before you were like, oh man, those people over there, who knows what they are. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. right? But that's what happens. People do yeah. that. We we want that. The the illusion of the other. Yeah, it, it becomes it 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 becomes the it breaks down quickly if you give people some sort of a framework so that they can kind of figure out who's who, and then they plug everybody in, and then it's like, oh, that's just my uncle Charlie. Except it's not my uncle Charlie. It's just somebody who fills in that spot. <laughs> you know. Mm. So, so it's it is kind of hardwired into us to to create this group. Oh yeah, so it's survival cooperation. And yeah, such, and that we just work with that in modern society to uh, have groups that do not kill each other if we can help it. If we can help it, so there's there's the two sides of the of this of this human uh, coin. You know, we we aren't special, but we don't think that's true. We kind of we kind of want to be special. Um, we in, in and the pathology of that is that you know if you if you feel that that the other can be put into the position of subhuman, you'll do it. I mean that's 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 the evil you know, sort of the um, the un, unfortunate evil subtext of humanity is that this happens recurrently. So you have to we have to accept mm -hmm. that this is part of who we are. It's we 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 try to find the other. And try to put them in the position of being less than, and yes, and when it, when you see that you have to you have to it has to, something in you has to kind of say eh. yeah. If there's any takeaway to take from here, the whole you are not special thing, mm. don't use that as a way to feel bad about yourself. Use that as a way to look at yourself as a person, and then use that as a way to look at all of the different people around you and all the different groups and whatever group you are in, look at that as a way to say, okay, I'm not special. These people aren't special. We're equal. Am I, am I looking at these people as inhuman or different? Is there a problem here? Use it as a way to self-examine, not a way to put yourself down. Yeah, exactly so. That is, that is a wonderful way to take, take away from this, is that if you could internalize your non-specialness as a superpower, you know, maybe that's the wrong term because <laughs> it sounds special, but if you could internalize the fact that, that you're not more special than anyone else, that they're just as special as you, and all you don't, all you don't have is you don't have knowledge of them. So, so allow a good bit of healthy doubt about how good you are at judging people. Or how how they're obviously wrong and you're obviously right. Those things should be right away red flags, as you say, self examination. Say, well, if I'm feeling like they're wrong and I'm right, maybe I need to check myself and say, well, you know, you know, that sounds a little like I'm thinking I'm special, more special than them, and that's that's sort of an egoic thing. And and then I got let me stop for a second, take a little deep breath, and just say. 
and it's the sort of the mantra is I'm I'm not special or I'm not more special. You yeah. know, I'm, we, we, I'm we just preach as a special. little we preach a little bit about here. Just a right. smidge. Just a smidge, just the tiniest bit of of doubt. <laughs> that maybe, maybe, just maybe I'm not one hundred percent right all the time. I know that sounds like heresy. It's hard to do. <laughs> it, it really is. But like, you know, it's okay, for hard. some okay, some people very easy to doubt yourself. But for those of you with ironclad confidence, doubt just a little bit. Well, and you know, we kind of we kind of wrapped around too because, you know, when when we say, you know, do do you are you a good judge of people? Say, so, yes, I'm an excellent judge of people. I know exactly what this person's going to do. And and yet, if you say to somebody, no, you know, I don't really know, and it sounds so like you don't have self confidence, like you, like you, um, as you said before, it's like you're you know, you, you, it sounds like you your low self esteem. Well, you know, they could be just as good as me, and I don't really, I'm I'm not the best person at this, and you, but that's actually be ironclad unhealthy. in your doubt. Yes, but but it's a very healthy thing to to um. Not consider yourself to be the arbiter of truth, to not consider your needs, wants, desires, and group to be the best needs, the the, the most you you should be deferred. So the, the, a little bit of healthy um, self deprecation yeah. or doubt is yeah. good. And that's that's what we're, we that is the take. That's another takeaway there. Not yeah. only yeah, not special, all doubt is bad. It is a not, symptom of a healthy mind. Yes, there we go. A symptom of a healthy mind. Um, well, you know what uh, we we've done is we've talked all the way through the hour. How'd you like that? Hmm. I enjoyed it. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoyed it too. It was it was I think the best show ever. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. It was definitely very special. Uh, but one thing we have to do is I think um, normally we have to sign off. I'm not sure. I didn't get the word from Scott, but normally we have to sign off about three minutes early. So uh, let's let's take that as as this is our sign off. Thank you very much, by the way, for standing in this evening. Uh, it was very special. Oh yeah, no problem. I, I am the best person for the job. You um, definitely are. I will. All I will my opinions you. are uh, factually <laughs> correct. Yes. Um, and I'm better. And also, I'm built different. You are built different. Uh, you're, you're superior. <laughs> I'm special, and I'm just a special little boy, and that has done great things for my mental health. Well, you should you should sign off now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my sign off. What do you want oh, from that, me? Oh, that's that's great. So let let me say this. I'm, <laughs> I'm a line. special little boy. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> All right. All right, we'll, and we'll sign off. Good night. Yeah, good night. Have a good Christmas.